Good morning. I'm up really early again. Just taking some much needed um, contemplation time and gathering my thoughts for the day. Um, I was up working last night till like one. It was late. <laughs> um, channeling and reading and really getting connected into the collective and what's happening and the energy and um, there's a lot of stuff going on for a lot of people that I'm picking up on and yeah this this video isn't about that I just 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 there's a lot of stuff in there there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on so I'm gonna try and use my experience and what's going on with me to maybe help you through what you're going through um I try to be really authentic with the videos and not plan them out too much what I'm going to speak about um I will get around to doing the uh timeline video um but I, I like to talk about things that are relevant to me and what's happening and how quickly things change and um, and yeah, and, and as I'm feeling it because I think it's a truer account. When you talk about things when the moment's already gone, you react differently, you talk about it differently different words come, different insight comes, you know, you get a completely different viewpoint on it. And I, I want to talk about things while they're actually happening because I think it's more relevant because when you are going through hard times and you are in, in the thick of the thick of the chaos, the thick of the emotion, it is hard to find clarity in, in, and truth and, um, and the and the path out of difficult situations and i feel that's a strength of mine that i can hold on to the right path and and find not the right way because i don't really think that there is a right way i think everybody has their own truth and everybody has their own ways of doing things and we're all on a journey and we're all at different points of that journey so we all come at different things completely differently and I think that's why it's another reason for me to talk about what's happening in in the moment um and and discuss from both points of view as best I can or see things empathize and I think that's what gives me the, the best way out of situations or the best way to deal with situations for me. I'm saying for me. I'm just going to move the phone a little bit because the sun is coming up and it's going to make me blind. <laughs> it's really bright today. The sky is blue for the first time in absolutely ages. <laughs> so... um Obviously, if you've seen the video yesterday, I shone some light on some of the situation and I will keep doing so because, because it needs to happen and I want to inspire other people to come forward and talk about these difficult things. Now, obviously, it caused, um, not backlash, but you obviously get a reaction and the reaction was that um, my son is not displaying any of the um, violent behaviour that he was with me. Um, and that he's been given a stable ground to work from. And that um, he's happier not seeing me. Or not being with me, or happier, happier with his dad. 
And there's there's quite a lot of stuff that I want to address. But the first thing is about the happiness comment. Now, that to me is 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 something to undress just in itself. Who are we to decide when someone is happier or not? And this is sort of what I keep talking about when we're deciding things for other people and saying, uh, putting accusations on mental health and things like that. How could we possibly feel when someone is happier or not? Because they smile more? Because they are um, easier to get along with? More content? Less angry? less outbursts like what what is the gauge of more happier for somebody because and what comes to mind is so many people that are committing suicide that you have no idea that anything is even wrong with them that's what comes to my mind i mean look at robin williams for god's sake life and soul of the party skipping and bouncing round and goes and kills himself. One of the most depressed people, you know, underneath un, underneath the skin. I don't. I don't. I think it needs to be addressed across the board about this need to <clears throat> project our wants and needs onto other people, and almost tell them what they want and they need. Um, and that's not just, just for my son, that's, that's for everybody. And again, my mental health has been brought up and, um, that is one of, um, my son's dad's concerns is my mental health. And I'll say it for the record again, my mental health is absolutely fine. Thank you very much. Um, And uh, the things that are distressing me are completely natural things that would distress anybody. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't really feel like I need to say anything more about that. I, I, it's up for debate pretty much every time I open my mouth. Um, so uh, I thought I would. Um, shed a little bit of light on the situation with with my son and parental alienation because that 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 was brought up so um when when my son was born and his dad left um he went to live elsewhere which was fine and he was breastfeeding so it was difficult for his dad to take him away and his dad felt that he didn't want to be in my company for reasons of his own he's he made it very clear that he didn't want to be around me because I made him feel x y and z fair enough um so he would see him on weekends and obviously with him being breastfed, it was short periods of time. These um, these short periods of time, obviously, were sporadic. Um, his dad would, would constantly be swapping and changing what days he was coming for him, what times, bringing him back early. Um, that his mum and dad would bring him back. Um... I would often see his mum with him out in 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 the pram, um, and on occasions, obviously, life gets in the way, and he wasn't seeing him. You know that such is life. But every time that my son was coming back from seeing his dad, he was in a complete state, and I took videos of my son because he was that distressed. He wouldn't eat, he wouldn't sleep, he would scream his head off, 
and it was almost like he was completely overwhelmed and overtired. That's the only that's the only sort of explanation that I had for it. Just complete overwhelm. And almost like he was poorly, but no temp, no, no. I could never find anything wrong with him. So I would say to his dad, you know, like he's coming back upset. He's coming, you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, for a year, for a year, over a year this went on. And I, th and I kept saying to myself, it'll calm down, it'll calm down, it'll calm down. It never did. Louis got worse and worse and worse to the point where if he was going on a Saturday, it would take me till Wednesday to get him to be calm, to have a calm energy again. This was obviously massively distressing for me. Um, and amongst other things that had happened... Um, over this year's course, um, as well as Louis's dad continuing to slander my name across the community and say that I had abused his daughter. Amongst other things, he was uh, he was telling people that I was crazy. Um, he was telling people that I'd ruined his life. Um, yeah, just, just constant slander. Um, and as I said in the other video, he, he took his daughter away from seeing me. She was seeing me a couple of times a week. Um, I had been in her life for four years and helped bring her up. And we, we, we were good pals. We were good mates. Um, so when we split up, he stopped me from seeing her. Uh, I was allowed to see her for, um, I think it was for about a month. Um, and obviously she came to see Louis a little bit. And then all of a sudden, um, she didn't want to see me. She didn't want to see me anymore. And apparently that was from her. She didn't want to see me anymore. And the last time that I saw her, she was telling me that I didn't have time for her. And I was like, where did you get that from? Of course I have time for you. I have time. I am I am free. I'm not working at the moment. You can come whenever you want. And then she told me what she'd been told, that because I now had Louis, that I wouldn't, have time for her and I didn't want didn't want her to be there I corrected her and I said that she was welcome any time that she wanted any time any time to see Louis she could phone me up any time and come over she was my friend if nothing else we were pals so I didn't see her again and I haven't seen her since um, and that doesn't mean that I don't send love to her every single day. I've, I've had to deal with not seeing Louis' sister like, like losing a child. That's how it's felt. I've actually had to see a professional in regards to trying to deal with, with that. Because, because it was bad for a very long time um so anyway yeah so this went on for a year with louis coming back in a state and the constant slander and there were lots of other things as well we were left without heating uh, and hot water for nine months um i struggled with money for that whole time um, I was asked to leave the house that we owned when Louis was really young. Um, just, just general, general high levels of stress, high levels of distress. Um, 
I found myself not wanting to go out into the community because I felt like everybody was talking about me. Um, I My work dried up because obviously nobody wants to have their flower girls and bridesmaid dresses um, altered by someone who might have abused the child. Um... So yeah, my work was affected. Um, the relationships with my friends were massively tested. And I have distanced myself from a lot of people because of things that have been said and rumours that have been spread. So in the new year... Um, of 2019, um, Louis's dad, his partner and, um, his daughter saw us in town. Apart from, apart from his daughter, his daughter didn't see us. And Louis was with me and he walked within a metre of us and didn't stop to see his son. Just walked straight past. And it was almost like a switch went in my head because I stood there and I waited to see for his reaction and I would have welcomed him. I, you know, I. There would be no way that I would have um, said anything in in front of the kids or his partner. That's not what I'm about. And he he walked past, and I was like, it, it just just a, a, a switch went in my head. I just couldn't understand. I couldn't get my head around it. I couldn't compute it. And it just re it really, really got to the core. Really, really got to my core. Upset me a lot. For Louis. And the same thing happened later on. Him and his partner walked straight past us, me and Louis, in town. Um, and I just, I just couldn't get, I, I just can't, I still can't get my head around it. I've never been aggressive to either of them. I've never, I, I just, it would have been a smile and a nod, you know, like, cool. Um, so... After um, this whole year of back and forth, back and forth, are you seeing him this weekend? Are you not moving dates? You know, not keeping to any regular thing. I was having to cancel my plans and move my stuff around and it was just getting to be over the top. And the more that I moved things around, obviously, the more the situation was pushed. And I... I had some feedback from someone, and I'll not say who, about the actual extent of the slander that was going that was being said about me, and it was from people that were incredibly close. So I knew close to Louis's dad, so I knew that I could trust them. Um, from their inner circle, and I they would tell me the extent of what was actually being said and how often it was being said and who was saying it. And um, I messaged his dad and said, if you're not going to stop doing what you're doing and acting the way you're acting, then Louis will stay with me until further notice. And that further notice lasted for over a year. 
And the things that are being said are still being said. And the things that are being done are still being done. The only difference is, is that instead of changing any behaviour whatsoever, he took me to court to see his son. And he's made it very clear that I have problems with my mental health. He's made it clear that about, well, he he has put forward the allegations of abuse. He has put the allegations um, towards his daughter. Um, when my son was going into the contact centre, he was being checked for bruises. Um, and with every single text message and every single encounter, my mental health is still being um, brought up. Um, it's a constant. And still that I have ruined his life and still that I have caused him so much heartache. And that and that is true. That is true. I probably did ruin his life because, and I'll tell you why, because being a psychic, a psychic medium, you can see. You can see how somebody really is. You can see what somebody's truth is. You can see the authenticity of somebody. You can see the masks. You can see the patterns. And one of the reasons why I said that I needed all of that stuff to stop before Louis went back into into his care was because I could see the pattern. I could see the pattern of behaviour. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to be able to see patterns in people's behaviour because it's a cycle, it's cylindrical, it goes round and round and round. Now, when I was with Louis' dad, the blame was put on his uh, parents. Then it was moved towards his brother and his wife. Then it was moved towards his widowed parents. Then it was moved to his widowed wife. The blame shifts constantly from person to person, whoever whoever he needs to manipulate at that time. So when I was saying that I think it would be best for Louis to stay with me, I knew full well that the older that Louis got, obviously he would be told all of these things, negative things about me, and turned against me. Now, going from the contact centre where the supervision, where uh, Louis was supervised, Louis was kicking and screaming, saying he didn't want to go. Didn't want to go, he didn't want to go and go to the contact centre. And I assumed it was the contact centre because it was in a graveyard and not a very nice place. So I, I, I assumed it was, was there. Then when contact went to unsupervised, very, very quickly, Louis' behaviour changed. It changed towards me. He became incredibly violent, smashing up the house, constantly attacking me with any means necessary, throwing toys at me, biting me, punching me repeatedly, kicking. And this would go on all day, not just not. It started off when I was just getting him dressed and it just accelerated to pretty much all day. When I would compliment him or tell him that I loved him, he would say no. Why would he start doing that? For months and months and months and months, I have tried to work with Louis to the best of my ability, using every single parent professional, professional's advice that I can get hold of to support him through this transition. 
none of it has even touched the sides to the point where I couldn't get him in bed. I couldn't give him a bath. I couldn't get him dressed. I couldn't take him out. Literally, as if his world had gone into complete chaos. He wouldn't go to nursery. He wouldn't go on his bike, which he absolutely adores. His personality completely changed. All he wanted to do was watch films and eat junk food. That was it. That's all he wanted to do. On Christmas Day, he was attacking me and at my friend's house, which was one of the first times that they've seen it. They were a bit shocked. Christmas night, I couldn't even put him to bed. I had to put him down in his clothes because he was he was literally going off on one. On Boxing Day, his behaviour was that bad that I don't think I could even sit next to him the whole day because he was constantly lashing out. So I wrote his dad an email, which I will share with you all because I think that's really important as well. Um, and I, I, I told his dad that he was going to live with him. Now, why would I do that? Can you imagine why I would have done that? how bad it would have got. I'm a single parent. I have no family around me to support me. His nursery was closed. I had no other way to get round this and I needed a break. I haven't had a break for three years and over the last six months, It's It's been really, really tough. Being hit, hit constantly is a form of torture. Not getting enough sleep is a form of torture. And I can't tell you how much it's upset me that every time I tell my boy he loves, that I love him, he says no. When I tell him he's amazing, which I do every single day and that I'm proud of him, he says no. In the last hearing in court, the letter that his dad put forward said that my son resents me. What does my son resent me for? And in a text message that I got last night, I was told that my son is happier with him. Why? Why would that be the case? The difference is, and this is what I want to talk about, parental alienation. With Louis being so young, when his dad went away, he would have only had an energetic connection to his dad, which would have been formed when he was in my belly. You can read up about this, it's really, really interesting. So, my job while he wasn't seeing his dad, was to keep, excuse me, keep that energetic bond alive. And I did it to the best of my ability. I would talk about his dad every single day, lots of times a day. We would talk about him being at work. We would talk about how talented he is. We would talk about how funny he is and what I'm going to play, play him daddy's favourite music. I would play football with him and say... um get his, his kit and stuff out. I would talk about his family. I would talk about his granddad and how good a builder he was. And I would talk about um, his his brother, uh, his uncles and, and his nanan and his auntie Shell and literally everybody. I would talk about everybody. I had photographs all over the house of him and his family. And I meant every single word that I said. 
I didn't say anything that was untrue. I didn't say anything that wasn't positive because I believed every word. And that energy, that's what Louis could feel. The honesty, the integrity about that energy. Because they're all great people. His dad's a great person. And that's what I was telling him and that's what he believed. So after a year and a half, a two and a half year old walked up to his dad as if he saw him yesterday. That's how good a job that I did about keeping that connection alive. And that includes his sister as well. In, and in a matter of weeks, on the flip side, my son is saying no when I'm saying that I love him. There's a really, really, really big difference. A really big difference. It couldn't be any more polar opposite. 